But let's move on and talk about a sector that's in focus and really a company that's been, uh, you know, really the talk of town. The telecom space is what we're talking about. Stocks like Bharti, Airtel and Vodafone Idea have witnessed a good surge in 2023. Vodafone Idea particularly has seen a stellar move in just the last two, three trading sessions. It's about a 30% gain that we're talking about in just two sessions alone. To discuss what lies ahead for the telecom sector, for telcos, the outlook ahead, uh, we have with us a telecom industry veteran and, of course, uh, subject matter expert Sanjay Kapoor, who was also the former Airtel CEO, as well as Balaji Subramaniam, Vice President of IIFL Securities. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining in. Good morning, season's greetings, and let me start by wishing both of you a very, very happy new year. Sanjay. First question to you, and I'm just going to you know, dive straight into it and get the elephant out of the room. We spent the better part of 2023 wondering what's happening to Vodafone idea, whether we are now a two-pronged market, can there be a third player or not? And every now and then, you know, buzz keeps coming in. Uh, without, you know, bordering on the realm of speculation, let's, let's get your view in on this. Is there a real chance of survival and Vodafone idea finding more, uh, more equity, perhaps more investors? In 2024, are we looking at a complete duopoly market or will we have, uh, you know, a thriving third player? All right. First of all, uh, a very happy new year to you and all the viewers. Um, uh, I'll try to answer your question to the best of my ability. Um, you know, let me start with a global perspective. Uh, first of all, the third and the fourth of play, uh, players globally are finding it tough to make a business case given the shortening capital cycles world over because the technology that used to last 10 years now lasts only four or five years. So that's a global problem. And India is not delineated from that. Let's come down to the Indian players. There's a set of things that uh, Bharti Airtel and uh, Geo have to face in the coming years. And there's a set of things that the third and the fourth operator in India have to face during 24 and 25 and years ahead if they survive. Now, the moot question here is, um, what happens to Voda Idea given the huge amount of debt that they carry? You know, from a share business perspective, I actually don't see a business case where uh, somebody from any part of the world will come and say, well, I'm willing to fund this company and bear all the debt burden that this company has uh, and catch up with the market players and compete with them and make a business mm. virtue out of this going forward. I actually don't see that happening, right? It's going to be really a very, very, very tough order. Uh, you know, um, there are speculations, there will be speculations, but if Vodafone can get over that hurdle in 24 and find really somebody who who can digest that much of debt and, and make a business case out of it, then my best wishes to them. But uh, being somebody who's been in the business for a very long time, I see a very, very remote chance of that happening. Okay, I'm glad you put that down, right? For all the people who are feeling this FOMO factor of Vodafone, I mean, it's been a 30% rise in two days. So it's got to get uh, everyone's eyeballs. But uh, I'm glad you put down the facts. Balaji Subramanian, who also tracks this entire space, joins in now. Balaji, first explain to us what is the rationale behind this big move uh, that we've seen in the last two days and what's your own prognosis? Happy New Year all and uh, thanks for having me on the show. Uh, so, uh, as you would have seen, there are uh, uh, media articles which uh, talk about uh, uh, Starlink potentially uh, making an investment in uh, Vodafone idea, uh, which is seen as, you know, some sort of a ma magic bullet which can result in uh, uh, the company's uh, problems going away. But on this, I would also concur with uh, uh, Sanjay who uh, just uh, mentioned how uh, difficult it would be for anyone to uh, assume Vodafone Ideas uh, liabilities. Uh, so my sense is that uh, uh, one can't rule out the possibility of uh, the promoters uh, uh, putting in uh, equity at uh, some point in time now that uh, the company has got uh, government support. Uh, but the big uh, thing is, you know, who is uh, willing to cut a large check, uh, a check large enough because we all, we all know that um, uh, there is this moratorium on uh, Spectrum payments and uh, AGR payments uh, till uh, late uh, 2025. But once we uh, reach uh, that point, uh, the government also has got an option to convert uh, the principal during the moratorium into uh, equity, which means that whoever uh, enters the stock right now 
uh, sees a significant uh, 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 dilution potentially. Uh, so that is what uh, makes things a little tricky. But one uh, uh, thing which one has to keep in mind is that uh, uh, about a couple of months back or rather three months back, uh, there was this development on uh, Supreme Court uh, allowing uh, both uh, Voda Idea and Bharti to uh, file curative petitions against the AGR plea. Uh, so, in case there is some relief on the uh, uh, PV of the AGR liability, uh, then uh, things can potentially uh, ease uh, uh, a fair bit for Vodafone idea. But uh, at this point, uh, it still looks like a long shot. Okay, all right. Uh, clearly stating that okay. out. Uh, good morning, gentlemen, both Sanjay as well as Balaji. Welcome to the show. Well, uh, Balaji, I wanted to ask you about the other point. You know, we were talking about uh, tariff hikes in 2023. No material real hike came about. But in 2024, there is hopes again. What are you penciling in? My sense is that uh, uh, till the elections get over, the probability of a tariff hike uh, remains low. But subsequent to that, I think uh, you know there are a number of things to watch out for. One is that uh, Vodafone idea may uh, still be uh, may still have not uh, raised funds. But at least uh, they are uh, growing their absolute revenue, which was not the case maybe six to seven quarters back. Number two, uh, the extent of uh, revenue market share for gains for both uh, uh, Reliance Geo and Bharti Airtel uh, has uh, come off uh, in uh, the recent uh, uh, quarters. Because, as I said, Vodafone also has been uh, proving to be more resilient of late. And thirdly, I think at some point in time, uh, Geo uh, or you know Geo platforms will have to come out, come out with its IPO. And uh, before that, uh, probably you know they would uh, uh, like to show uh, uh, better cash flows and uh, return ratios, considering uh, they are on the uh, cusp of spending nearly twenty five billion dollars on five G in the last uh, one one and a half years. So, so all that means that a tariff hike is inevitable and maybe sometime in the second half of this calendar is when we will see that happening. Mm. Okay, let me actually uh, bring in Sanjay. Sanjay, Wayne on this. It's been a slow grind, right? We kept waiting for Bharti to cross the 200 mark on ARPU. Finally, it happened. Uh, I think it was uh, <clears throat> the first quarter, second quarter, they built on it. But the question is, will we get more meaningful tariff hikes uh, at all? Uh, you know, and if not tariffs, then what is the other big defining trend, perhaps, that uh, one should watch out for for this year from from an investor point of view? Yeah, absolutely. I think you are now moving the question from the laggards to the leaders, and uh, leaders are the ones who can uh, make a difference in the market on the tariff position. And uh, Airtel has been leading this in the past. But let me come to the moot question to say, what do you expect out of uh, Geo, and what do you expect out of Airtel uh, in the coming year? Uh, to me, the biggest uh, dilemma that all of them face is, uh, uh, do we double down on 5G or do we uh, just uh, try and cover up the investments that we made? Because 5G is not returning um, um, you know, capital to anybody, and it's become uh, tough to monetize 5G. Uh, there are more, newer technologies coming in. We are talking AI. We are talking IoT, we are talking storage. Um, many of the nuances of adjacencies are now building up with the telecom operator. How do they monetize all these? And if they can't monetize, then what's the option? The option is to only uh, grow the top line and make sure there's a healthier ARPU. And like you said, there's a healthier EBITDA resultantly. Now, uh, you know, if 5G is not going to return and if the newer additions of customers given the market is reaching more saturation and there's only displacement of market share from probably Voda, Idea, BSNL to these guys, which is also slimming down now, then what is the alternative? Alternative is only to raise prices. And given what is happening to the world, uh, 200 rupees is absolutely insufficient. I don't want to uh, crystal ball gaze on what is the timing of, uh, but it is to me yesterday. They should be raising tariffs from yesterday. If they really have to make a virtue out of future technologies, be able to invest in customer experience uh, and double down on 5G and probably 6G tomorrow, then this tariff is not going to lead them anywhere. I think they need to take it up. And who can take the lead? It'll be either uh, Geo or it'll be Airtel. But given the past track records, I think it is Airtel more likely and Geo to follow uh, rather than the other way around. But I really hope and pray that in 24, they are able to raise up their tariffs. Uh, I leave the timing to them. 
All right, gentlemen, we leave it at that. Thanks a lot for joining in and, uh, you know, just assessing the situation in the telecom sector right now. There's lots that happened. And, of course, uh, in the last two days, Vodafone Idea has been topping the charts. Let's.